for any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check out G2A.com. And if you need any Ultimate Team coins, then head over to UFIFA. The code CHEZ will get you a discount on both sites and all links are down below. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 31 of the Chelsea career mode here on FIFA 15. We are continuing to get bids for Loic Remy. I'm going to keep rejecting them. I'm not going to click the reject all button because I like to see who's interested in which players etc during the uh, the entirety of a transfer window. It just seems to be that Loic Remy is the man that gets most bids for him right now and uh, we seem to have a distinct lack of bids for players that are actually on the transfer list which is quite frustrating but uh, we jump into our second friendly of the uh, the entire season and actually it's going to be the second only friendly there won't be a third because in replace of our third friendly we have the community shield final coming up a little bit later on in this episode against Manchester City so we're hoping for a decent game against Juve that was actually just a random clearance from uh, Ricardo Rodriguez Remy brings it down and route one stuff we take a 1-0 lead in the 29th minute and you'll be able to tell from the replay that it really was just a no-nonsense clearance from Rodriguez. Just gave it a good old whack and uh, Remy beats, I think it was Benucci, the defender, underneath, challenging challenging him for it. And he just outmuscles him, brings it down on his chest and actually that is a very impressive finish. No wonder loads of teams across Europe are interested in Loic Remy. He was our second top goal scorer last season and he's started this season in great goal scoring form as well. So I made a couple of changes at half-time, bringing on Lucas Piazzon and Marco Van Ginkel, two players that have come back from loan from uh, season one. Unfortunately, Piazzon doesn't look anything like uh, his actual real-life self, which is quite disappointing considering almost every single other player that we have at our disposal has a genuine game face. But those two changes actually seem to unsettle the side. And this first good save from Diego Lopez fell straight back to Romulo. And in the 55th minute, they managed to bring themselves back level at 1-1. Uh, so well, that was... An unnervy start to the second half, to be completely honest. They have big switch here for uh, Quadro Asamoah. Beats the man who slides in, turns inside and then makes the 1-2 rather than just trying to out and out beat the man down the line. Good initial shot from Vidal here, but again, a second shot that the goalkeeper, new to the side of course, playing his first game for the club, has palmed a shot straight to an opposition player. So I was disappointed with uh, Diego Lopez there, but still, he can only go up from here, can't he? So I made another change, bringing on Wilfred Boney for his first uh, game for the club of course his unofficial debut as well as Diego Lopez etc Boney you could tell from that uh, little cutscene there is so stocky and really big built but hopefully he can be an adequate replacement for Didier, for Didier at Drogba and there worked the ball quite nicely actually receiving, receiving it into feet held it up well turned the ball around the corner for Marco Van Ginkel unfortunately though there was no finish and we lost the game 2-1 so so far in pre-season two defeats although uh, to be completely honest we didn't deserve either defeat so I'm not really too uh, worried for now. Again, as we head back to the menus, another bid for Loic Remy. I am just going to reject all of these, but it is quite intriguing to see, you know, the vast amount of different clubs that are trying to pick up our French striker. He's still looking for a centre-back, and I'm going to try actually a straight swap with Lucas plus a little bit of money for Gerard Piquet. The defence is somewhere where we need to improve more so than anywhere else right now. We only want a centre-back and a winger, and uh, I'm going to try and use Lucas's make-weight for Piquet. If I can't, I'm going to have to wait for uh, for either Lucas, William Carvalho, another bid there for Loic Remy, uh, Ma uh, Moses or Marco Marine, and for them to move on so I have some extra actual physical cash to be able to bring PK into the club but uh, if we aren't able to move any of those players on uh, I might try in on deadline day a cheeky little straight swap deal but first team news here's the Chelsea lineup Thibaut Courtois starts in goal Gary Cahill starts with Imeric Laporte as the centre-backs Nemanja Matic plays with Fabregas in midfield Diego Costa is the lone striker today Manchester City's lineup today. Wilfredo Caballero plays in goal. Vincent Company starts alongside Elekim Mangala in the heart of defence. Yaya Toure plays with Fernando in central midfield. Stefan Jovetic is the main striker today. So an unfamiliar lineup for City against us so far in this particular series. Every time we've faced them so far, they've used a 4-4-2 with two holding mids and Iniesta alongside Yaya Torre. This time they're playing a 4-2-3-1, so it was going to be quite interesting to see how the two sides came up against each other with similar formations because, of course, we've now switched to a 4-2-3-1 as well from the 4-3-3 of last year. So perhaps a little bit more of a level playing field when it comes to uh, trying to take on City. They obviously were the better side against us last year 
and uh, deservedly won the league title. We've had a couple of early chances there though and then Jovetic beats his defender across the front of him and rattles the woodwork. That was a decent chance for them and uh, the Montenegrin will be disappointed not to have given them a 1-0 lead. And you can see we're still only in the 15th minute. We're going to have another chance here. Diego Costa turning inside well but Willy Caballero makes a good save and they seem to play him over Joe Hart more often than not which is weird. I'm not really too sure why but I guess we'll take it because as far as I'm concerned Whilst Caballero is a good goalkeeper, he's not as good as Joe Hart. And Willian, Willian, right, Willian, Willian is straight through here. Unfortunately, though, can't even test the goalkeeper with that one as it is a particularly disappointing finish. Just slides off the, uh, the laces of his boot and doesn't quite find the target. You can see what the bench thought of that particular chance. Danny Carver Howell doing a double face palm. We're into stoppage time at the end of the first half now. Cleesey gets a good turn inside the defender. Modric plays the ball down the line to Jovetic. Squares the ball. Now she actually plays, plays it back. Cesc Fabregas gets the initial block but the header finds Jovetic again and they take a 1-0 lead just before the break. I was disappointed to go in at half time with a 1-0 deficit because I felt we deserved to at least be on level terms going into the second half if not ahead thanks to uh, you know the amount of chances and the quality of chances that both sides have created but I made a little bit of change to the formation there as you can see it's a little bit less aggressive with uh, the two wide players playing a little bit further wide and a little bit further back hoping to have more of a you know more interconnectivity with the two holding mids and the three attacking mids to have more of a midfield five rather than a you know a defensive two and then a forward three hoping that we could kind of you know just get a grip of the game and actually two minutes into the second half we brought ourselves back on level terms and Immediately, Diego Costa scoring a great breakaway goal. The midfield linked up really well, as I had liked, or as I wanted them to do so. And a great ball over the top. It was brought down well by Costa. Brought it down similarly to how Loic Remy did in the game previously against Juventus. And actually, to be honest, the goalkeeper should have done better with that finish. But it was uh, very well taken by the Spaniards. So we'll take that. We're back on level terms. And just a few minutes later, we're still coming forward. Willian down the right-hand side this time. Nice little turn inside. And actually kind of ran out of space. I mean, in the end, going to play a 1-2 with Matic to, uh, to give Willian some extra space to run into. Again, turns inside and finds the uh, the Serbian. Good strike, good save, but Oscar is on hand to give us a 2-1 lead. Juventus did it to us in the first friendly. We've reversed roles with Manchester City. We went in 1-0 up at half-time. They went in 1-0 up at half-time. We got caught with two quick goals at the start of the second half, and now City have been caught with two quick goals at the start of the second half. And actually, this third replay shows it really well. The technique there from Oscar to keep that down is particularly impressive. I was really pleased with that goal. I made a couple of changes. You can see Scherler and Ramirez coming on for Fabregas and Willian just to add some extra uh, extra fresh legs into the mix to keep City out if we possibly could for the rest of the half. Although, as you can see, there are 25 minutes left. And now, what, 15 minutes left? And I try something a little bit different from the free kick here. Perhaps a little bit of a training ground move. Try and work it around rather than having a straight shot on goal. And Caballero makes a great save down low from Andre Scherler, who's only been on the pitch about 10 minutes. They just brought on Sergio Aguero for Fernando. But it's Cahill that has the next effort and that is a really good save from Caballero particularly impressive but it wasn't enough we take a 2-1 win from the Community Shield final and that's our first silverware of the second season we got an FA Cup and a Champions League double in our opening year and thanks to the FA Cup win we were playing City here in the Community Shield as they were league winners and we've picked up our first silverware of season two as well so three trophies to our name now as Chelsea manager and we've still got some work to do in the transfer window which will hopefully get done in tomorrow's episode now I mentioned in yesterday's video, a uh, video that you haven't seen as per recording of this, but I said uh, that I might do the, uh, the uh, not the Europa League, the, um, the European Super Cup is the word I'm looking for. I might do that. I was mentioning about perhaps doing that video as a live com. I'm actually not going to do that as a live com. I'm going to integrate it and work it into a normal episode just so that we can uh, actually get deadline day involved in a video with some games rather than uh, you know having to, uh, to have a little bit of a break etc. So uh, I'm just working it in my head a little bit differently but as you can see huge bid for Thibaut Courtois and had I not been trying to sell on other players to uh, to make the money up to get a centre-back, I may have been tempted to put a counter-offer in there for like £60 million or so, but Courtois is particularly impressive, uh, easily best goalkeeper. Diego Lopez has come in. He's done okay. He did make some great saves actually against Juve that I didn't show you. It just so happened that the two mistakes he made led to two goals, but as you'll be able to see here, we still have a lot of men to move on to hopefully free up the cash to bring in A, a centre-back more, uh, you know, centre-back as the first signing, and then 
and maybe a winger as well. Like I say, I may on deadline day uh, try a straight swap with Lucas for a winger that I have in mind that will remain nameless as for now if we can't bring PK in. Although, of course, if Lucas goes on and we get that money in for him, the money will go straight towards the centre-back if we haven't yet brought in a player in that position. The preference is PK, although we do still have Jerome Boateng and perhaps Sergio Ramos to look towards. But... Uh, PK is the obvious choice considering he has been linked with the club in real life. So tomorrow's episode will uh, will hold Derby and West Brom, our first games in the Barclays Premier League. And then, of course, the, uh, the episode after that will include Hull, the Wolfsburg game and deadline day so I can work it properly into a, into a proper episode. But that's going to bring today's to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Leave the video a like if you enjoyed. Of course, subscribe if you haven't already. We're coming close to 31,000 subscribers now, which is incredible after hitting 30k just recently over the weekend of course there'll be a my player episode tonight we're coming to the end of the first season in that series as well perhaps looking to get ourselves a transfer move away from uh, league two cambridge united so that's going to be uh, particularly interesting over the next few episodes and of course check the links in the description to g2a.com and now you fifa as well if you want some ultimate team coins have picked up a coin sponsor mainly to help fund uh, a brand new pc that will go to you know all the money i earn from uh, you know, sponsorship, etc., go straight back into the channel. And it's going towards a new PC and a new setup so I can get you uh, face cam and green screen, all that good stuff. That's what all of the uh, the sponsorship is going towards. So if you do want that sort of thing, then feel free to support me by buying, uh, you know, your Ultimate Team Coins from that particular site with the code CHEZ as well. So, uh, yeah, that's going to bring today's episode to a close, guys. You will see that new altered intro on every single video from here on out, but uh, just a little heads up. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you tonight with my player. And uh, thank you very much.